Okay, as we venture into the more trinomials and factorization, we'll be factoring trinomials of the form, same form, after factoring all the greatest common factor. And this is where you will be put into the test. If the terms of a trinomial have a common factor, the greatest common factor should always be factored out. That's a key point. So if there's something common in all of them, factor it out. Then a trinomial is factored completely when no, fact no factor can be factored further. Always factor completely when you are asked to factor. Don't leave it in between. Okay? So let's start with some examples for this one. If I ask you to factor, and I give you 2x to the fourth plus 26x to the third plus 80x to the second. Now we have been finding the greatest common factor of terms, which we did some time ago. And so we should supposed to be able to factor the greatest common factor from all of these three terms here. We will factor out the greatest common factor, and in this case it is 2x squared. Now, the 2x squared, you should know how we get that 2x squared, okay? Because we know how to find the greatest common factor of terms now. Then we will factor the resulting trinomial. Why? Because the first step in factoring, factoring out any, any polynomial is to factor out the greatest common factor, remember that? The first step in factoring, factoring any polynomial is to factor out the greatest common factor. Factoring out the greatest common factor first makes the fa factoring by any method easier. Not to say it's impossible, it just makes it easier. That's what we want. Math is not something complicated, it's just something to make easier. This is how you look at it. So, let's start. We will factor out the 2x squared. So, I put here 2x squared. Okay, and so when I say 2 divided by 2, that's 1. X, x to the 4 divided by x squared, that gives us x squared. Okay, 2 to 26, that gives us 13. x cubed divided by x, that gives me simply x. 80 divided by 2, that gives me 40. And x squared divided by x squared, that gives me simply 1. We have reached up to that point. Now, Forget about this 2x squared for right now. I'm not saying to throw it away. I'm saying just forget about it so that you can work with the middle piece now. Alright, so you're going to concentrate now with the middle piece. Don't worry about nothing else. So what are the factors of 40? So you worry with that piece now. Factors of 40 will be 1 times 40, 2 times 20, 4 times 10, um, 5 times 8 those gave us 40 and then when we find the sum of the factors we get 41 22 14 and 13 voila this 13 is what we need as a sum and this 40 is what was what we need as a product therefore we can continue and say 2x squared open bracket we all know that this x squared here comes because the first two terms will be multiplied and that gives us the x squared x and x and then we need 5 and 8 so we put plus 5 plus 8 and that's our solution for this value here to factor it out so notice what we did we factor the first the common factor in all of them factor that out that's the first step you, you, you need to do so don't skip that step, otherwise this problem will complicate itself even more. Alright? So let's try our next example like that. We come and we have the problem factor. 4m to the 5th plus 8m to the 4th minus 332m to the 3rd. What do they all have in common? 4. And they also, I mean, the, the 4 could go into 4, 4 could go into 8, and 4 could go into 32. And then we have m to the third common in all of them. All of them have an m to the third power at some point. So we will factorize out 4m to the third. So we do that. 4m to the third. And now we say 4 divided by 4, 1. m to fifth to divide by m to the third, m squared. 8 divided by 4 will give me 2. 
m to the 4 divided by m will simply give me m. Negative 32 divided by 4 will give me 8. And m cubed divided by m cubed will give me 1. Now, only work with the middle piece. Alright? Now, remember, this is now taking what we just learned a while ago. When this value is negative, what do we do? We'll find the factors of negative 8. And then, find the sum of those two factors which gives us a negative 8. That can possibly give us a positive 2. And that will be our value. So, let's see. Middle piece. Factors of negative 8. We have 1 times negative 8, 2 times negative 4, 4 times negative 2, 8 times negative 1. And when we find the sum, we have negative 7, negative 2, we have here positive 2, and positive 7. Voila! How can we get that positive 2? Here. That came from the combination of saying 4 times a negative 2, which gives us a negative 8. So therefore, we put now 4 m cube open bracket, m, because remember, this first term is saying m times m, and then we put plus 4 minus 2, and that's our solution. Now this is what we did. Factor, factorize out the common, the greatest common factor in the three terms, and then we work with the with the trinomial of the form x squared plus bx plus c okay that's how you work that one out let's go with the next one this next one is where we put the negative at the front but we have numbers at the front also okay so we proceed there i will say factor negative 13 g squared plus 36 g plus g cube okay we will write that we will write the terms of the binomial in descending orders of g what does that mean well the g with the biggest power will put that to your left hand side which will come to this side and then the one with the with the smaller power, you start to come down, come down, come down to when you get zero power. So let's rearrange it. This becomes now g cubed minus 13g squared plus 36g. Okay? Arrange it in a descending order. Right? Before factoring the trinomial, we will write its terms in descending powers of g or in descending powers of x, whatever. The point is that you need to write their powers in descending order. That's one of the best approach. Now, what do, what do we notice here? That everyone has something in common. What's common? The G. So, let's take out the G. You have here G, open bracket, G squared minus 13G plus 36. Now, this type of problem looks familiar now. So, this should not give us trouble, alright, or any problem. So you work it out. Factors of 36. Factors of 36. That gives us 1. But remember we want a positive 36. So um, we have a negative 1 times um, negative 36. Negative 2 times negative 18. Negative 3 times negative 12. Those are the only ways how we can get negative 36. Now, let's combine them to get a negative 13. Alright? And see what then happens. Okay? So, one more term here. Negative 4 times negative 9 gives me 36. So, we find the sum now of the factors. Negative 1 and negative 36. Negative 37. Negative 2 and negative, 20, and negative 18. Negative 20. Negative 3 and negative 12, negative 15. Negative 4 and negative 9, negative 13. This is the combination that we need. Okay? So let me zoom in again. Here, right there. So we have now G, that's the outside G. And we will put now the G, this G comes from saying G times G. We have negative 4, negative 9, negative 4, 
negative 9. The negative 9 could come to your front, negative 4 could go to your second. And that's our solution for that particular problem there. So it should not be difficult for us to work out. And then we will come to our next step of examples. So let's go over this problem here. If you notice that the powers are all mixed up. First step, we are arranging in descending order. Look at the base which has the biggest power. I put that base to come down with its powers. All right. And then you start to factor out if they have something in common in all three terms. Factor that out. Then this looks like the problems which we have been doing before. So you factor that out and you end up with your solution. Okay. So that's how we work out those ones there. Now, we have problems where um, sometimes they will challenge us. And this is the type of problems which I'm talking about. So let's see now. Factor. If possible. I'm going to use the word possible because some, some of them may not be possible to be factored out. And so we have x squared plus 2x plus 3. I need to factor that out. Our strategy usually is that we will assume that this is the product of two binomials. And we will use a systematic method to find their terms. Unfortunately, we, we don't see that right away. Why? Because since the terms this, these terms here, do not have a common factor other than one, the only option available is to try to factor it as a product of two binomials. So solution, to factor the trinomial, we must find two integers whose product is three and whose sum is two. That's the key point there. All right. So now the possible factorization of three and the sums of the factors are shown in this table that I'm going to write for you guys, All right? So let me write the factors here. I have factors of three. One times three, negative one times negative three. The sum now of the factors will be one plus three, four, negative one plus negative three, negative four. Since two inter integers whose product is three, and whose sum is 2 do not exist, we can say that this cannot be factored. Okay? It is a prime trinomial. So problems of this form, which you see that cannot be factored, is known as a prime trinomial. It can't be factored, this method here, by the product of two uh, terms all right so we cannot do that so that is left in that form for the meantime